your professor and okay i think yeah now i i i already I, i'm already doing it so it's working <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, also, Nieze is here. Yes. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, being here with us and for having accepted our invitation to yeah. this answer. Uh, uh, thank you a lot for the invitation. I was happy to to. Um, yeah, to participate. <laughs> Thank you, it's a pleasure for us. Yeah. And, uh, okay, uh, we are all, are we all, uh, Emilio? Yes, yes. We are yes. Okay, okay. And... Okay, so I think we can start. Uh -huh. And okay. uh, I can uh, let you the stage. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I have a like a presentation. Um, yeah, yes, first, um, yeah, hello to all the, the students also attending and thank you for invitation. Thank you for publishing our project in a book. Uh, and yeah, I have a material about for one hour. So I would just if and my English is not really good. So just if you need some more explanation just um i don't know how this whole uh, machine works but i will try to answer um uh so um i, I will now um try to share the screen <laughs> uh and see like this uh Full screen. I have now full screen. Do you see my screen? And yeah, okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So yeah, um, I would um, actually yeah. As I said, I hope yeah you are also all healthy and uh, okay and yeah. in these times okay. <laughs> it's not really easy. So yeah. yeah. Um, I would like to start with the story of our first project um because the just to, to to see because we are 15 years now um since our organization is um, on working in the field of public space and i would maybe it's important to to see how we started for students also to understand what was the issue why so um the three colleagues architects we all three um uh, we were really colleagues in the faculty we we were archi architects and uh, we went to live abroad at one point, like in Vienna, Antwerp, and Barcelona. And whenever we met back in Ljubljana for holidays, we were all debating public space and comparing it to, to cities we lived in at the moment. I must also admit that in the School of Architecture in Ljubljana at that time, actually there was no such a thing as public space, city development, etc. It was all about buildings, but since we were a lot more interested in everything around it and between, we said, why don't we try just testing these spaces, trying to domesticate them, to temporarily squat them, to put some art installations, to start to observe them. So we started, we got um, around the city, we discovered 11 abandoned uh, atriums in the old city center. We communicated with inhabitants, Mm, and uh, we cleaned these spaces, we put some flower art installations, and for two weeks we opened and exposed the potentials and beauties of 11 spaces in the old city center. It was one action for two weeks, it was a big success, and it was in 2004, as you see, and it gave us uh, power and enthusiasm, in, enthusiasm to continue working in this field and not continuing doing buildings. <laughs> So um, if we look at our timeline um, for many years, first years, we continue with this street festival. Uh, we choose different themes like atriums, parks, riverbanks, children playgrounds, streets. But through learning from doing it, we grow. We started to organize debates, lectures, to write, and above all, we started doing other projects or other types of projects. And I can say we had like maybe three important um, turning points in our career. In 2010, we started with long-term projects on soft urban renewal. 
So it means we stayed longer time on a certain area or in certain city district. In 2016, we joined a um, spatial network of NGO in Slovenia. So we started to do educational and research projects. And in 2018, when we started to work uh, with uh, smaller municipalities all around Slovenia, um, helping them to develop tools for soft urban renewal and participation. So um, at the moment, uh, we are six people here, eight, but now six. <laughs> and we're not just architects, we have anthropologists, socio sociologists, designer and communication manager on board. Um, we are a um, nonprofit organization and we have this legal status that this is possible in Slovenia, um, like um, to work in public interest in field of culture and space. Um, this yellow circle, it's important because um, how do we think of our projects? Like the big part, the 60% of uh, this, the, the dark yellow color signifies that we, uh, the most money we got, we got for public grants. That means that we taught ourselves of the projects that we think are important at a certain moment. And then we try to find financing for this. And uh, more and more lately, we, we got like smaller municipalities that call us and want to participate with us. And this is this public service contracts that we do. Sometimes we even do some design project, but this is maybe lately less and less important. And uh, before we really begin, I would just like to, to uh -huh, and yeah, I, I, today the, all the project that I will present today uh, are founded um, via public grants and we thought of them like we constipate all the project from the beginning in our um, office. Before we, but I, before I begin, I would just like to read four sentences that accompany us through all our projects. So I say it's like from our web page, but I think it's important because <laughs> what we believe in and what we stand for. We explore and open possibilities for new uses of public space. We work for residents and visitors, for current and future communities, for cities. We believe in spaces that are resilient and democratic, enable change and spontaneous use. And we collaborate with municipal, municipal administrations, resident initiatives, local communities. So um, I have um, another small part of introduction and later on I will present seven projects. But uh, in this part, I would like to introduce, uh, to say a few words about how we understand spaces, how we understand the public and how we address these two notions in everyday work in um, Ljubljana, in our Ljubljana reality, where we do most of our work. I think that like this picture, um, the Bruegel um, all painting shows a lot of different relationships between the public and the space. Uh, and yeah, I really love the picture because it, I always, I can find something new <laughs> or some new questions in it. We, we see here buildings just as a background, a stage where, where we could say the city happens. And we see a lot of activities, tensions, happiness, sadness. And the question that arose around these observations are the questions that we ask ourselves a lot of time doing projects in public space. So who sets the rules here? For whom this event is a carnival and for whom it is a land? Who has the right to be there? Who shapes the city life? And actually, what are the tools and tactics to address this um, life? And if, if I show just another example of how these two sites looks like city on one side as a physical structure and on the other hand, the, sit, the life in the city, um, we can say we have the tools for addressing physical structure. And it, this is for sure urban and architectural planning. And these conventional tools are very efficient when it comes to fixing spatial problems of the cities. But when but they don't always succeed in connecting or changing the urban soft issue. They don't address people who live in it, visit and use the city. So I think as an NGO or even as um, one working with public space, we have a lot more tools to address life in the city. 
and um, we have a we can work with we we have temporary installation street festival tactical projects software urban renewal lectures debates research education and so on so um, I'm showing this to show you what are our tools, what do we do, and actually these tools are lately called also tactics. Tactical urbanism we know from um, like New York, and just to explain more what this tactical urbanism or how we use the tools in Ljubljana, I would just show you these two examples more. For example, in New York, like the mayor decides to close the Times Square for traffic. He calls designers, architects, and he asks them, let's see what this, this space is capable for. Let's test different furniture, let's test this different color, and let's test the space to see what we can do later on. But when we, for example, come to Ljubljana, and for example, we face, um, we, we have um, abandoned and neglected playing ground in neighborhood, and we have to start right at the beginning. So the tactics are also how to convince the city municipality that these spaces are vital, of vital importance for people living in the neighborhoods. So how we develop project of renovation, where do we find money for it? Um, who are the people that we want to cooperate with renovating it? Um, as an NGO, I must admit we have a lot of possibilities to act and to react. Even yeah, um, and all these, I think, are the, our tactics. All this we do actually, and um, the tactics change also from problem to problem, from situation to situation, and from time to time. And I, will, as I will mostly talk about projects in Ljubljana, I would like to take some time now to present Ljubljana. To de um, the development of the city in the last 15 years and our personal uh, observations, questions, and reactions on the situation. Um, as I don't know how, how you know, Slovenia has, for example, 2 million people, and Ljubljana is the capital of Slovenia. It has 350,000 inhabitants. So, small, small, small country and a small um, um, capital. And it, it has a like really nice uh, Ljubljana yeah, has um, consists of a nice cute medieval core, um, a castle hill and the river which is um, going all around the castle hill and um, embracing the old city center of Ljubljana. But if we zoom out, we see how small the center is. You can see it maybe here. <laughs> this is it. And about two thirds of Ljubljana inhabitants live in the neighborhoods built after the second world war and are all these neighborhoods and all like you can see them here are the biggest one or here and here and all over um they are now about 60 70 years old um all these neighborhoods and back to 2004 when we began public space as you see was not present in the minds of neither inhabitants nor city representatives the only use they had was to serve a car. It, it's not really special. All the cities have this. Maybe Ljubljana was really slow in developing public spaces. But at that time, um, our main question was, um, what kind of spaces Ljubljana offers? What is the role of these spaces? And most of all, where actually is the public space in Ljubljana? If we move to 2008, we can say that some local organizations, including ourselves, started to play with this space through temporary interventions, small events, performances. Inhabitants of Ljubljana started at least temporary to appreciate that kind of spaces, but municipalities still didn't pay any attention to it. So at that time, we somehow demand more long-term solutions new traffic regimes. That was really important at the moment when Ljubljana was also accepting new traffic strategy and it was all going in wrong direction. So at that time we asked ourselves how to make public space accessible for people beyond temporary events. And, um, and then, like around 2012, we got a new mayor and the city began with big plans. New traffic regime was accepted. Municipality put loads of money in renovation and beautification of the city center. On one hand, we were 
totally happy about new traffic strategy that enabled more pedestrians on the streets. But due to uneven money distribution and exclusion in the renovation, there was a crucial question that arose. Of top-down or particip participatory planning? Who do we include in this renovation? Who do we consider and um, how do we renovate these places? And of course, you know the story. Of course it was top-down and of course we know the story. Inhabitants of the city center left. Although for a short period of time, Ljubljana's public spaces seemed almost deserted and sunny and, and during holidays, but then tourist boom started. And actually we, we started to ask ourselves, it was the question from 2012 already, who is actually the public here in the old city center? And if we look where people live, it's the same from 2004, 2008 and 2019, the situation just stayed the same. And, and here are the residents of Ljubljana and in the neighborhoods, as I mentioned above, but the places stayed the same. And um, um, there are a number of problems. Maybe I will address some of them later. Um, the story about land ownership here is a bit complicated, but still not so much that we should not question and start to test ways on how to address public space in residential areas. And yeah, last month came the corona <laughs> and the quarantine. And the beautiful city center is empty. There are no grocery shops, of course, and no uh, inhabitants. So tourist and clothes shops are closed and there are no green areas. So I guess these places like the city center became a bit of a remote area for residents. And we asked ourselves, where are actually the people? And we find them, we find them in the neighborhoods, we find them, um, in the green areas, in the direct vicinity of the neighborhoods, um, they all respect the distance, but they are there outside and we can observe that they do not have a lot of problems with how to use the space. And you can see that, or we, we all know that all defined areas like sports and children playgrounds are closed at the moment. So it's really nice for me to observe um, even the smallest patch of greenery being used at the moment. So what would be the question are, um, for the future designing of the city? Do we need defined, more defined places or maybe more undefined places? And if we maybe just with the last slide jump back to the first question with where is the public? Well, with all this happening on the balconies, clapping in front of hospitals, yoga in the hallways, uh, distance socializing, we can ask ourselves, like, where is public space now in quarantine? Is it maybe expanding? Is it becoming bigger? Um, yeah, so these are um, all, all the questions that we... Uh, so you, you can maybe a bit see how our everyday life looks like, like questioning and ideas on every corner. And now I will jump into project. It's time to show uh, a few of our projects. And um, I would, I, maybe because I don't see you, I would just like to ask you if you hear me well, is it okay? Or do you have already any questions? Yeah, we see you, <laughs> hear you, it's perfect, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah, let's go um, to the project. Actually, I would like to present um, seven projects, um, but to be more understandable, I divided them into five groups, five scales, five different tactics. Um, I would show uh, one temporary intervention, two tactical projects, um, one, one long term project that lasts for five years, soft urban renewal of one neighborhood. Uh, then a research and education to two short projects and also participatory model prototyping that uh, we are working on lately and we are totally enthusiastic about it. So, um, like temporary interventions, I show you before just the first one, but we later also in 2013, um, for example, we were invited, this is the the main square between Ethnographical Museum and Museum for Modern Art and National Museum. 
um, there is a fountain that's empty because somehow from the beginning on it was not made properly so there is no water inside and it's forbidden to to skate to to play there but it just stands there and there it is in front of all the museums and in 2013 i guess it was we were invited to triennale of modern um, art in ljubljana um, and at the same time we saw that city of ljubljana has some founts for to overcome the heat island so we we put together these two puzzles and we said okay uh, because this plot belongs to to the state to ministry of uh, culture we convinced the city to invest to the plot of ministry of our culture in order to lessen the, the to to um, lessen the the effect of green um yeah to um, heating overheating so we proposed like we just brought what we did we put sailing boats and the sailing boats it was it's, it's an art installation we borrowed them at the seaside we brought them for two uh, like two months in Ljubljana uh, but because we brought them um, they repair like the ministry repair the fountain and put the water inside and um, what was for us really important was to see how this place immediately, just after the opening of the Triennale, became a really huge children playground. Kids came and put their clothes off and went jump into it, and it became a really, really live, lively place. Um, and what was actually needed, or what we demanded, was just to fix this fountain, not to leak, actually. But we we had to use the like uh, this tactic of temporary installation of art piece that they did it and uh, it lasts for one summer and then uh, again the problem of leaking became uh, important but still um, they didn't fix the fountain and fountain is again empty now but still I can say that um, for example um, later on we were invited to work on children playground on this um, in this area, and we renovated some old, uh, you, you know, this uh, stuff from playgrounds all over Europe, and they are in Slovenia. They are throwing them away, but we renovated like two two trains, um, and again on this square, a lot of new things are going on now from film festivals, from um, performances. Like pe people started to use this place um, and although one thing failed we, we cannot say that with the art installation we we managed to establish the fountain back but we established other things that um, went on in, in the place so um, and we, we, we show that it can be a pleasant place um, so the tactical project if we jump to the second um, part of the project it's the project where we stay, uh, we name this uh, when we stay on one location a bit long or longer time, and we actually achieve a long term uh, change. Um, we, I will show you now one project that we did um, on the street, which is called Chufarjeva Street. You see all these red numbers. These numbers indicate how many students, pupils, or this is the, for example, the dorm, uh, student dormitory with 360 students. This is the primary school with 360 pupils. Another primary school, the same number. This is the high school, and this is the kindergarten. So we know, we see now on this street there are approximately 2,000 kids every day going to school from the school. Parents bringing kids to kindergarten, etc. And it, the picture is like this. So you see where is now the place for a three-year-old guy <laughs> going to the kindergarten, no place and no tolerance at all. So well, the, um, mostly it was the kindergarten. This is here and the picture is taken here. Like you can really easily understand why parents decided to bring their kids with cars because it's really like deadly dangerous to, to come with um, walking. And yeah, what to do, where to start? 
how to like we we cannot just go to parents and say can you please walk because nobody would you it's understandable that they will not walk and that the city didn't want to close because of the protests of parents you know so what what we did we first did a plan we checked on the plan whether is it possible to close like the northern part of the street for the cars and the southern part leave it open and yeah what we would get with this and um, where are the entrances how it would work so this was the plan and we said okay it's possible but we didn't show to anyone this plan yet we just knew it's possible and what it's easy to do it also because you see yeah it's just a few things that you need here and then this side is closed and so the cars cannot go elsewhere but we started really slow, softly. We found some money for having play, um, um, workshops with children. So we started planting trees. We started uh, we in the kindergarten. They had um, one action that they paint a lot of t-shirts. And we said at the end, we said to the teachers, why shouldn't we just for the last day close the street and put all these t-shirts out so people will see what you are doing. And we didn't spoke about closing the street for always. We just said, okay, we are exposing, this is the holiday of the last day of kindergarten. It's a huge festival. People came and they were so happy to see that they actually, this street can be also beautiful. Like you see cherries are blossoming and it's really beautiful, but you didn't notice before. So then we did um, further workshops we enroll like 50 meters long paper here along the street. So kids were drawing what uh, their proposals, what they can think for this street. Now it's empty. So they had a lot of ideas about it. We include also older like students from um, high school and from dormitory. We work with them on furniture. They develop different types of furniture. They would like to like, a, this is like a bar or you can sit on two sides like it's like they test it with, uh, with stereo and then with the wood, they, they also make the furniture. And then we invited teachers from the kindergarten. They are really, really nice and super fast and they can really color the street like, and they colored the street. Um, I will show you the picture. It was like this in one day. So this was then the action for which we actually asked the city and we said it's a temporary installation. It will last for one year, the color, then it will go away. But actually when, they, when we started to do this, um, yeah, it was like the neighbors were enthusiastic about this, the teachers were enthusiastic. So actually there were, nobody was asking um, are we allowed to, to go with the car here because it was Obviously, from the first moment, the kids proposed this, uh, these uh, toys to hang on the fence. So they proposed them. They were, um, when we put them on the fence, they were there. They were watching the pro process. So they want to, to walk to school. And to, so they were convincing their parents not to go with the car, but they said, we want to walk today to see all what we did. So actually, kids somehow convince the parents to walk and also somehow we manage also to to um, speak with the city to put seven of these columns as you see them here so they really prevent cars going on this side of the street and so actually like you see again just these columns were really necessary on a long term uh, um, other things were just the means how to to negotiate with all the neighbors, with um, teachers, with parents, how in a slow way to show them the potential of this street. And we got really, really a lot of like um, good um, feedbacks from parents. They said they are really quicker going with by foot or with a, with a bicycle and not driving the car in this street. So um, actually now the color is gone uh, but the street is closed. This part is closed, and also the ki yeah the kindergarten bought a lot of bicycle stands, and like the scene there is totally different now. Um, and even the city put like the official benches because these benches they broke like after two years they were temporary. 
um, and it, they were even not meant to be long, longer time. So um, this is one of the temporal interventions and the other one is just the only project that I will show that it's not in Ljubljana. You see here, here this is Ljubljana. Um, this is the border of Slovenia, and this is Italy, Trieste, you see here. And this is the small, small city of Idria, a mining place where we did the project I will show next. Um, so um, Idria looks like this. It's uh, between mountains along the river. It's a mining city, a uh, mining town. It has 5,800 inhabitants. Lots, like really lowest unemployment rates and lots of new technologies, uh, in new industries and rich tradition. Really, they are all so in love in this mining tradition from, from eating, from housing, from uh, all this. They had a lot of museums, but they are really car oriented. What we can also easily understand because people live elsewhere, like two thirds of people live outside of the city in the mountains. Um, there is low awareness of a public space and there are, like the city didn't develop mechanisms for participative planning, um, but it's, it's just normal for Slovenia. No, none of the cities did, so they are not <laughs> the worst or something. Um, what we, um, um, we apply for funds and we discuss the with the city first what would be the area to address. So do they propose a city center? I would show you, um, this is the city center, for example, this is the castle here. Um, here is all the industries, the mining industries. So we decided to work on this area, which is a bit remote area, the street that from, goes from here to here. We have the neighborhood of, from uh, after war, World War. Um, then we have um, old, um, yeah, I will show you maybe here. It's, it's a really, really rich area. It has just 800 inhabitants. So we were a bit afraid at the beginning how to work with so small communities. Wow. <laughs> but actually, um, the, the area is really full of different uses from retirement home, museum, kindergarten, school, police, hospital, church, office buildings, factories. So we have inhabitants, but we also have all these people going in all these institutions at the, in the area. Um, and um, uh, we, we found a lot, a lot of different names. For example, these houses, they have different local names this, than these houses. Or this area has, again, a different name, like maybe 12 or 13 different names for the area um, that, are, that are not written on the map, so we can say that it, identification of this place is, is strong among the people. But if we see the place, how it looks like, again, like this is the, like the street where um, the most kids from here go to school, or this is the kindergarten. You have two parallel streets, but no sidewalks, no, no bike lanes, um, and this, um, this, street, the upper street, it was used to be a railway because at the end there is a mining uh, factory. So this was a rail and this was street, but then they paved everything in a street. And how they call this, I mentioned before a lot of different local names. This street, the upper street is called Alea. Ale, you know, maybe from French or like um, line of trees, because usually they had benches here. And they have this name still, but now it's a parking lot that, that's named like uh, Ali. <laughs> and um, how, actually how we started. We didn't know the area. We, we didn't know it at all. I was before like two times in Idria, so I couldn't say I know the people, I know the area, I know the problems. We, uh, we organized uh, some meetings with inhabitants. We did some pictures on the floor, this they disappear in one week in order to tell the people that we are here, in order to tell them that they are pos it's possible to, that they put their wishes, initiatives, ideas in the post box. And also um, we organize walks. This is, this is a walk with blind people. 
they, this is the old people's home at the beginning of the street. And we wanted to see how the people that are blind or half blind perceive this space or what are the obstacles that they can find. And what, what is here interesting, because we always learn a lot of things doing projects, is, for example, in Ljubljana, we always have a lot of people on meetings. But here, when we organize a meeting, like there were like these four people coming. <laughs> And that's all. I didn't uh, make a picture of a half of it, but this is all the people that came. But then when we opened the post box, there were like um, 250 um, letters, what people expect, what people see as a nice thing here, what people see as an obstacle. And uh, they were really constructive um, suggestions. And I think that this was really important that this guy, for example, he's the main guy to maintain all these um, apartment houses. So he he listened here what we had to say, what we would like to do, or that we are prepared to listen. And he went to tell all the people. So they knew what was it about. And they sent us all these letters. Um, on the basis of these letters, we put all the vicious initiatives on the list. We went to the mayor. We discussed with the mayor. We see what kind of what kind of proposals and strategies had Idria, the city municipality, for this area until that? We merged all these ideas and then we, we said, okay, um, we, can, we can work on a plan of a renovation, but let's wait and let's test the place first according to the initiatives that we got from inhabitants. They were all about benches. It was like, we want to have all these initiatives where like, we really want to have benches under these trees. We remember this, it was nice that we have them. So what we did, um, like this, it, it is a really, really cheap, cheap thing <laughs> because all these steel constructions that you see, these are the old school chairs that we got from, Ljub from one school from Ljubljana. We put wood away because it's from inside. And we put the real like four centimeters uh, thick wood panels and all what we did, and these are um, like the neighbors helping us, it's just to oil these things and to put them on the um, steel constructions. And I, we, this was the, um, in the middle of June. So, um, and we, it took us one week to develop nine different benches. And we produce all these benches in front of the old people's home. They gave us electricity. They gave us two parking lots. You can see here also the ambulance. They gave us electricity. And so people could see um, during one week, like every inhabitant went by and asked us. So we were able to communicate with these people. We were able to see, uh, to say them. And we, we were always... Uh, just saying, we are just testing. We got a lot of initiatives. It's really nice. We are testing now. You, you can just, it's not for, for good. It will not stay here for always. We will put like five parking lots away. But in, in September, we can discuss again whether it was the right decision or not. So they were all, okay, ooh, I'm interested. Cool. And there was no uh, um, opposition, I think. At that time, they were all enthusiastic and they are all really capable people of working with wood, so they helped us a lot. And actually, what we did when we put all these benches, we didn't do any opening or any celebration or anything. We just put these chairs there. We, we put a leaflet in every household and said, okay, these are now the chairs, please test them. This is the address where you can send complaints and uh, praises or whatever. Um, you have this contact, you can call us anytime. If something broke, please call us. But okay, this is now for two weeks there. And we send sometimes some photographers to, to see the picture. And I like this one the most, you know, because the old people, they, they went for a walk. But it was a really nice story because we worked a lot with these people, what the, the main guy in the old people's home told us that there are some old people that they don't want to admit that, that they are not really capable of walking alone. So they just don't go out because they want to sh don't want to show him themselves with, with these helps, you know. And there were no benches at all, so they couldn't rest anywhere. They, they had to go and come back. 
So uh, that's why also these benches were important. And this, this, this small, uh, this, this was before the only opportunity to sit and rest for them. And what was, they are so used to it, so they sat beside the bench, and I liked it the most. Um, yeah, okay, and here is one picnic table that was right away a success. So for some of them, we knew already that, that are okay, but some are really, they were really questionable. And in September, we did a meeting to invite all the people that to present. In between, in summer, we drew plans. We drew plans how the like where the bicycle lane could be, where the what how could we rearrange the cars. We did a traffic policy, a lot of different studies and working in the office. And we wanted to present these plans and also to ask the inhabitants. And as you see here, there are now just four people. There were fifty people coming because they said, "Okay, okay." We didn't believe at the beginning that there would be something really serious but now we see so we came to tell you and i like also this this thing that sometimes they can that this guy is the same he will spread the news to the ones that are not here today but a lot of people came and this is the mayor and we presented the plan and also we we um collected all the um all the initiatives about these benches so at on this meeting we decided which, ben which, be which benches will we keep on the places? Some of them we removed, some of them we just moved on another location. And this decision was taken here on this meeting. Uh, the plans were presented. The city already, since then, this is two years ago, they put new lamps here along. And now they are in the process, it takes a longer time, but in the process of um, getting the ownership on this, um, they are like the ownership of this plot is not clear. I will explain this a bit later on another project. But this, all these people, they are owners of the apartments. So they are also owners of the part of the plot. And all this plot is this in dispersed ownership. Um, there are several procedures in Slovenia in the same uh, manner now. So he, also here, what the mayor said was the best thing of this project was that he was he is able to discuss now how to divide the plot because he has a lot of different versions and he has trust from people and he has established um, like constructive dialogue um, through this project. And he said, I don't really care about these benches, but I really care that I can talk with people now. <laughs> so um, now they are discussing the land ownership and then they will do the, um, the refurbishment of the whole street. But um, lights are already here, bike lanes are here on this street and pedestrian area is a bit bigger. Um, this is the plan that we did. Actually, what we, you see here, we played a lot with how to put parking lots how to make pedestrian areas in between, because now the cars are all over, but with the same number of cars, we can just, you know, the, the game Tetris, we can just put them better. So, and this is now the plan on which the ownership issues are also discussed. So, you know, the mayor said, okay, I will maintain the street, the city keeps the street, but you will maintain these green areas, so you, you get it, or, you know, this is, um, and so what Idria got with this, um, yeah, oh, this picture, I love it so much. We got it, like, this is the, we got SMS, like one week after <laughs> we left Idria, we got um, a message that, uh, because they took this picture and they said, now we can really make a long walk and we can even have a celebration at the end <laughs> because this is, the long walk is from here to here. And they were so happy to go this table that they send us SMS. Um, so what, what did Ria got? It, the plans for renovation, what I already showed you, and it will take some time to, to make everything, to get the money and everything. But what, we, what did Ria got at the moment we, we started this is the, that the, these people were able to make longer walks. Um, and the new public space in front of the pharmacy down there, it, 
it's just a really a success because we find out with one bench that like a lot of people are gathering there and we left this bench there. Um, great approval of the project by the local community is also important. And also um, what, yeah, what I already mentioned that what Mayor said, it's this constructive dialogue between municipality and residents. So these are actually the results um, that we, we think are important. Um, and since now, because we somehow also Restorosh managed to, to make uh, or establish constructive dialogue with the city municipality. So since then, we, we have a lot of projects in Idria and these are all the projects. Like one year later, we did a parking policy for the whole Idria. Um, we organized a parking day, um, one small event. Um, we, uh, we did a huge research on traditional miners' houses. We researched to 200 houses and proposed the renovation for, for the owners. Uh, we are still consulting the owners of these houses. Um, we are at the moment renovating all outdoor areas in retirement home. And um, yeah, we designed uh, like one renovation, one miner's house is being rebuilt. Now it's an architectural project. But I just um, wanted to show that this um, mutual understanding bring uh, um, yeah, to a lot of other projects. Um, now I will go to one um, long-term project of soft urban renewal. And maybe since if you have until now some questions, um, I would also answer for the project that I presented, or, yeah? Yes, hello, I'm one. <laughs> uh, just, uh, I wanted to say that it's very interesting how you can have such a, a very, very positive effect by using the minimum possible, you know, like I see here the, um, the material and the methods considered are very, very, very financially sustainable, which is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, but uh, just I have a minor question. Uh, I saw that you used, uh, used chairs and wood and uh, some red painted cans for the trees. So uh, how did you know that these are the material and items available for reusing? It's like they are being recycled in a way. Uh, did the people tell you or? No, that, How did you know? Just a funny coincidence that, um, like the area I'm showing now in the picture, this is the South South neighborhood in Ljubljana, and we are in a good contact with the local school here in Ljubljana, and you know some people mm. in Ljubljana already know us that we recycle everything. So just like half I... before we went to Idria. The teacher of South neighborhood school called us and she said we are throwing all the tables and. Um, the chairs away, maybe you can come and see if you can reuse some of it. And we were like, okay, we need it, we need it, but we don't know for what. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually then it just happened that we had this project in Idria. It was really a coincidence, but the wood, uh. and in this area, there are a lot of woods, you know, a lot of wood that they produce wood, they work with uh, timber, so it was logical decision to use the timber. Um, uh, but yeah, the cans, well, how do we come to cans? From one project like years ago, we also searched for some, something which would be the cheapest way to put trees on the street. And we find mm. one producer of the juice, so we just use the same again. But yeah, sometimes it's really a coincidence. <laughs> No, if we would search at the moment, these chairs, we would never get them if it wouldn't be a coincidence, yeah. It's, it's also very uh, interesting how uh, in the first example for the kindergarten, when, you, when the cars were removed and the place was used only for uh, pedestrians, for parents to take their children, it's like it was a very temporary, uh, some kind of a prototype intervention and it affected the behavior of people. Mm -hmm. So with time, it became permanent, right? So it's shifted from temporary to permanent yeah. because it's very positive to, yeah, we, to the inhabitants. Um, actually, what happened? This this didn't we didn't succeed 
in, uh, for example, in Chufarjeva Street, in this yellow street, uh, we actually we wanted that when all this yellow furniture will be gone. And this was a, a huge work with this. And this is always, we are sometimes really failing in this, that we are leaving that kind of furniture on the street and then it falls apart, you know. So you have mm. to be prepared that you will take care of it. And we were able to take care of this furniture for two years. And when, when we didn't have any more money or energy, we just put it away. But we, we expected that the city will put real benches, you know, the one that they put in the city. They, we never succeeded. Until now, there is no bench on this street. They did put the columns, so the street is closed for the traffic. And, uh, but all these um, playing animals, these yellow animals, we also removed after two years because this wood, it's a cheap wood, you know. So it falls apart. So the street is working as a street as a pedestrian area and the city actually what they did last year this is like six years after installation they renew all the crossroads at the beginning and at the end they put the uh, that for kids it's easier to cross the bigger street to come to this street they did this but like for the furniture they never place it i don't know why but in idria mm. in idria they, they don't have so much money but each year when they got money, for example, for two official um, city benches, they always call us, okay, now we have another two benches. Where do we put them? And so they are slowly removing these school benches with the official Idria benches on the places where, um, where people say it's okay to sit. So, yeah. yeah. But in, in Ljubljana, we didn't succeed in Idria. With, well. It's, yeah. So, yeah, but it's always a wish that it becomes a good attempt. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. I continue. Huh? With, uh, yeah, this is like, um, as I said, a soft urban renewal. Um, maybe at the beginning, I have to say that in Slovenia, although we have a lot, a lot of neighborhoods, we don't have, like, we did in the Previous times, there were no such movement as in London, we know, or in uh, Germany, that all these old buildings would be put down and new would be built. The, you know, urban um, renova renovation stuff, this was not in Slovenia, not happening in Slovenia. And now when these neighborhoods are 60, 70 years old, they are slowly falling apart, but the city doesn't, like Ljubljana or even any other, they don't have strategies to address this kind of places. So just to put a frame uh, why we had to start in 2013, really bottom up and looking um, different car countries, how they do approach in soft manners to that kind of places. So this triangle, this is the main railway station. This is this medieval core of the Ljubljana center. And this triangle is the first working class neighborhood in Ljubljana that was built after the Second World War. As you can see, it was built without any urbanistic plan, like this part, then this part, then this part, like <laughs> four blocks, four blocks, four blocks, and then somehow they connected them with the streets. And it has 800 inhabitants. So it's a, it means like two towns of Idria that I presented before are living here and um, without any of this like you know they have school and kindergarten but they don't have they have one shop they don't have post office bank um, they don't have any cultural amenities they have one community home which I represent um, to 2,500 apartments and if we just look at two numbers that are really appealing in 2013, we count, like we, we know that the neighborhood was built for 500 uh, cars because like five years after building it, there was a nice research done by one architect. It was in 1960s. We have a nice research and questionnaire about how people live there from 1960s. So we know for at that time 500, but now we can count 4,000 cars. Um, at the beginning, we there were 10 different associations from scout, horticultural, singing choir, touristical organization of South neighborhood and so on. Now we have just two, 
but um, like this one is falling apart like lately. So actually um, local community is falling apart, but the cars are coming, <laughs> the main issue. And what what's really frustrating is that the city doesn't have, still doesn't have any strategy how to address all these issues, all these changes of numbers. And um, there was no intervention in public space. And this, this uh, map I put it to see, that you uh, would be able to see um, what the city in official plans predict as important areas, like here one square, here one square, and here one square. These areas are important, they don't invest in them, but like what is important in this neighborhood are these three green patch, just, and this is all. We worked here, we worked here. I will remember you when we come to, to, to the explanation of these two places, you will see how they look like and what they do actually. Um, this is the first one. For example, this one <laughs> is this one. And we put here these benches because they were gone and we put this because it was also gone and um, yeah. So how, again, how in 2013, how we started, we got a bit of a founding of the city because they get, they, they finance small intervention in public space on the places where they did instructions how to renew buildings. So they did a small leaflet. They said all the buildings from 60s should be renewed in this way. And in order that the people would see these leaflets, they said, can you make um, some installation here? Oh, then we said, okay, no, no, <laughs> but yes, we said, yes, we got the money, but we did actually, actually what we did. This was this first year we put, uh, we, we made picnics. Uh, we, we check all the existing research analyzes. We did a lot of on-site analysis. We walk in the neighborhood. I was living here for five years before I knew a bit, but still not so much just to start to work. And we had a lot of informal and formal meetings, events with inhabitants. We just started to bake pancakes. You know, this is this slide, the summer slide we did here. We started to lure the moon because it was, we, we made this, uh, the roof, the gardens. Every, every Saturday there was like, we, we just had a huge micro and we called people, please come down. We have pancakes again. If you would like to help, please help. And um, all the time we had also a huge map or no, model of the place. And we gathered some ideas, initiatives. We, we, um, we noted everything that we got from people, although the, these gatherings were uh, rather informal. Uh, we started also to cooperate with urban planning students from Grenoble and from Ljubljana, just to make some more analysis about the place. And in these seven years, I could say we developed a series of different projects where we found money, we started a project or where like initiative from people were so strong, we said, okay, let's come together, let's um, find money and let's start a project. So I will present some of these projects, but what uh, it is in Slovenia, I'm sorry, but what I wanted just to say with this slide, for us, it's really important that Everything that we do, this is the, for example, local newspaper that we do, it's important who does it. So to which people we connect, the inhabitants, these are we, these are other NGOs from the vicinity. Uh, this is the city of Ljubljana, different apartments, faculty of Ljubljana, local school, kindergarten, uh, different school. This is Grenoble um, School from Urbanism, um, Museum. Um, regional agency, library of Ljubljana. And uh, this is a bit old because now I could count another <laughs> pile of it. And this is for, for one, one connection and other connection is always look on what, these are the problems that we have in South Concilia. We have like spatial problems. We have social and economical problems. So what kind of problems do we do we address with certain problem with certain uh, project and um, um since yeah since 2013 what we did we 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 uh, regularly give out like local newspaper south twice three times a year when something important happens uh we have a lot of events in public spaces that are mostly organized by um, um inhabitants we just um, offer help 
Then uh, we have a lot of community meetings. We had a lot in the beginning, not now, not anymore. Then communities, we run a community space and a library of things. We did a renovation of a playground, um, um, planted urban orchard. Um, we did soft renewal action plan, actually for the whole traffic, the traffic and traffic strategy. Um, I will show um, um, three of this project just to go a bit more deeply. And why I, I always say we, <laughs> it's, um, it's we as Prostorosh and other non-governmental organizations, schools, or all these people that I showed here. So um, it's not just Prostorosh, but I will explain who was the main initiator. So in um, from the beginning, when we met with people, they were all the time like discussing, but you know, this house we built at the beginning when we all moved in into the, in 1960s, this community home, why is now empty? Um, why we don't use it? So there was an old bar inside, but closed. We asked for the city. They said, no, you cannot have it. And then we tried like another year. And after one year, we came up with a nice idea because the regional agency of Ljubljana said they will support projects that will support um, innovative, creative industries. And at that time, we saw that in London, there was first Library of Think opened. Do you know maybe what Library of Think is? This is the like library with books, but you don't have books in your library. You have sport equipment. You have different tools for household, uh, household machines, sewing machine, sport, um, um, different sport elements. And the people can come and borrow them. They don't need to have a drilling machine at home, but they come and borrow it for really cheap. So it's a borrow shop, but we, um, it was in London really uh, the first one. And we said, okay, we will make this in Ljubljana. So the regional, we, we propose this to regional agency and regional agency convince. This, these are all the tactics that, that's why I'm going so deeply in how do we came to this place. <laughs> The regional agency somehow convinced the city to give us this place in order to open here inside Library of Things. And at the beginning we said, okay, it's just an excuse. It will not work in Ljubljana at all, but we need this place in order to open community space. So it was just, um, uh, and then we started in 2005, but as um, not according to expectations, what we noticed, is okay, the community space was really needed. We have a lot of events, but also Library of Things actually is working well. And the first two years of founding for Library of Things, it helps us to enable one person to be present in the space for every day in the afternoon. Now we don't have so much financing anymore. We have one person present here two times a week. But since last, Two years, it's always the same. It's Wednesday and Monday. So people are used to it and they come Wednesday and Monday. But before, um, when we open it, we, we immediately see that like people just started to came. Kids started to came to play with uh, equipment from, from sport equipment, from library of things. And uh, it was just a new gathering place of the municipal society and how it works. Um, library of Things, you, you can become a member in a way that you work 20 hours for free. For example, you work something for neighborhood or you pay 20 euros per year or you uh, bring um, some, um, a piece of, I don't know, um, I don't know, a cooking machine or something from the list of things that we have that we still need, that are still needed for Library of Things. So you really have a lot of opportunity. And now we have 306 members. And until now, in these five years, 811 yeah, uh, borrowings. And community space is working in a way that people propose what they would like to have, like a lecture, a yoga class, a sewing class. But these are um, non-commercial activities from neighbor to neighbor, not professional ones. For example, if there is one neighbor wants to, it, he's a rentner, he, he does it for five years. That's why I'm mentioning him. 
he's a runner, but he was a dancer, so he teaches dancing uh, his neighbors for free. So this place is then for free for him. And what we do as uh, my colleague, he's responsible for this place. He just coordinates. He answers to the phones and said, okay, it's free on this time, you can come. And what he also does, he publish all these events, but just the events that um, the organizers wanted to be published. Because what, what's also important to say is that actually from these nine events per week, we have meetings of disabled people, or we have like mothers that have disabled kids, they meet here because it's the access is easy for big strollers. And actually they don't need publishing. They met them, they meet them among themselves. So um, we noticed that there are a lot of these groups that are not so organized, so they don't have access to bigger places in the city of Ljubljana because for, for bigger places, you have to be organized in an organization, you have to up, uh, fill in applications. But in this case, you just call my colleague and say, okay, we are five, we want to meet every Tuesday, and he checks if, and it goes on the trust without any papers. So we also find out that it's really important that we remove a lot of bureaucratical boundaries and then we saw what kind of people and groups of people are using this kind of place. And I can say that um, just two thirds of the users are from South Conocelia. One third is from elsewhere in Ljubljana because also in Ljubljana you don't have, so you have a lot of community spaces, but not so open one that you don't need uh, different applications because like we as an NGO are taking um, responsibility for the place. Um, so another project was uh, that we did in 2014 already. Uh, it was a traffic strategy. What we did, we, 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 I already mentioned all the analyzers. Um, we somehow gathered 20 people, like volunteers from, from Sausko, who were willing to participate in the big working group with some urbanists that we invited also. And um, uh, we did this middle, uh, in the middle, you can see a plan of South Conocelia. You can see what we said, okay, we need a really regulation. You have three points where you can enter with the car. So these three streets are for cars. Then we have some streets, because now they are all equal, all full of cars. There are some streets you can use for a car, but it's actually pedestrian area. You don't build, uh, the sidewalks, you just say cars go 10 per hour. And then what you have also, you have green lines that connect green areas of the South Conocelia. And you could easily walk through the greenery, just putting, uh, and we put like this kind of signs to mark this, these streets. They're already here. We just had to mark them. And if you went all over, you could read a sentence of uh, one local rapper. It was just a play. But on the other hand, we said, because they, they all, the people that came to the meetings, they demanded more parking lots. And then we said, okay, actually you need 300, 3,000 3, parking lots for South Concilia. And how many space do you need for this? You need this, uh, this part of South Concilia to cover with asphalt and then you can park all 3,000 cars. And we said, okay, do we have any opportunity? Do we have any other option? And they were like, well, we don't want to have so many asphalt. So I said, okay, let's check what we did later on. We check um, all the parking garage that are, one is here, one is here, one is here. They are all empty and they are 40 cents per day. So we started to give leaflets to all the households in South Co. It's really cheap to park in a parking lot, which is just across the street. Um, so, uh, and, but on one, this is what we could do as an NGO. And we, we presented this plan in the city council, but it's still on hold. The project, they didn't start it to, uh, uh, to, to deal with the, because of the ownership problems, with the, which I will explain later. Um, then um, it's, uh, am I late? No, yeah, okay. <laughs> Just checking the time. Um, South Conocelia Pregnant Renovation, we have uh, here um, 
this is the project that was uh, started like that one lady who lost the son died he was 33 years old he was a basketball player and had a small office already and the mother said he learned to play basketball here. He made a whole career in basketball. I want to put money that left from him in this basketball court. The, uh, the ownership was not clear. Half of the place is in the ownership of the city and half in unclear ownership. So we as an NGO and she as a money giver were the only one who could really do something here. So we, we First, organize a lot of workshops in school, in kindergarten. We discuss with kids. Actually, also when we discuss what to do here, uh, you know, it was always this hill where there is bunker underneath and a playground just here behind. It was always debate, and the kids couldn't just say what they will do on basketball court, but also what what they want to have for playground, what they want to have for this hill, and there were like millions of nice ideas. Uh, we organized public debates about these ideas. We, we did some planning, uh, some fundraising campaigns also. And we, we renewed them uh, in uh, four years' time. First year, there, uh, we put like uh, these branches of tree, uh, trunks. Or, you know, we knew that nobody will maintain this. So we had to pick really big trunks. <laughs> and they are there like six years now and everything is the same you cannot destroy this trunk even if you do something but and why we put this graffiti here because these neighbors they were complaining that the ball is hitting the steel mesh and it makes sound so when we put this wall they were satisfied they said okay the mesh is not like doing this nice anymore and it's okay now so and the this is the he yeah the guy is drawn here. We cooperated with um, 1107, a graffiti group from Ljubljana, to do this painting. Um, the next thing was old. Um, I show you when I describe tactics. For example, I showed you the picture of this um, of this playground. So it took us few years that we gathered also money, and then we we. Um, we work with the guy who's giving the certificate on the safety of these um, playing appliances because these playing appliances, they are all unsafe according to new norms. So we had to check every separate one and just maybe put some steel profiles on the other point, you know, just it was just rebuilding them new in order in order to to be able to respond to correspond with new norms, safety norms. So when we did it, the city gave uh, said, OK, because they wanted to just destroy it because it was unsafe and they didn't have money and they didn't have possibility because the ownership is not in the city of the city. Yeah. So actually a complicated story, but we renewed this place. And also these fundraising campaigns, they look something like this, like picnics um, and gathering money for new projects in the neighborhood. What do we do at the moment? We, we still run community space. We have library of things. We, we are um, next month publishing a newspaper with a huge map of local people that have special skills or special knowledge and want to be published. Um, and we are uh, also developing a support mechanism for local residents to organize activities. So it means that everybody that wants to organize here will get a small support in materials and in money. This we are now working on. So um, then I go to last three projects that are a bit shorter, not so complicated. <laughs> um, when, because we were working so much in South Conocilia, and this is again the, the floor plan of South Conocilia, and we never understood why, why is always this ownership problem? I have to explain you. We did a research on it because we said we don't understand. Nobody wants to tell us what, what, what. So we did. And what we find out, these colors, we ask all the people who is loaning the moon. So if the city, one department, the city, other department, inhabitants themselves, um, like one outside office, you know, we just have here all the machines that are maintaining <laughs> greenery. So you can see how many different people is maintaining greenery. Um, 
you can also here see that a lot of land, this, that all the public space is really dispersed. And it's really unclear to whom it belongs and why this happened. Because in Yugoslavia, when we were together in Slovenia, in socialist time, everything was common ownership. When we became independent, people bought their own apartments. So they became owners. We have 90% ownership in the apartments. And the public space was still not clear. And lately, in the last five years, people could ask for the ownership of the plot around the building they live in and their own apartment in it. And what the courts are doing at the moment, they give like four meters around and they are also not like, you know, none of the urbanistical um, experts are advising. So the, the public spaces are falling apart. They're becoming just, they, like when people get these four meters all around, they put a fence and put parking lots. So greenery is disappearing. We get more and more fences in the neighborhoods. Um, and it's a really scary story if you look at it deeply. But what I wanted to show how we, what, our, what was our tactic to understand this um, and to be able to communicate and to talk about it as a danger, uh, we, um, we invite 16 experts in, and we interview them. All these interviews are published on our webpage, it's in Slovene, but this is, for example, the inhabitant, this is the local rapper, but this is the, the main uh, um, woman on the Ministry for Spatial Affairs. This is the main urbanist of city of Ljubljana. This is the, the main urban uh, teacher. Uh, this is um, a lady from another city. Um, this is a uh, landscape architect, a really famous one, and this is the um, lawyer that um, cooperates in the procedures. And this is the guy, uh, also a lawyer, and this is also a lawyer. So this is important that we, we gather all the, the, um, the expert, what they say these experts, and what they, we ask them what kind of problems do they see and what kind of solutions do they propose. And we came out, came out with the result of the um, re, um, research was that we saw it's not just a problem of the ownership. You know, here you see uh, we have also the communication problem. We have um, uh, social changes. We have maintenance, financing, uh, planning, and we have also political um, and um, yeah, political frame. And these are all the problems and solutions. They don't go together. The solution of the pro of the urbanist and the solution of the lawyer are totally complementary. But it was a start. And since like three or four years, we are performing a lot of events, uh, debates, roundtables on this thematic. Because we think it's important what will happen with the public space. Another project of research, or maybe more education, is that late last two years we organized a film festival uh, because we noticed that the debates that we are organizing, like not a lot of people are coming or just always the same. And we said we, we, we want to reach, we want to talk with younger, with students, with students of social sciences, with students of urbanism, of architecture. Um, so every year we choose for one week in October four different movies, four documentaries about the cities. And for um, and what's special in this festival is, is that we don't show them in movies, but on special locations. So a lot of people also we attract with these special locations. And at the end of each documentary, we invite one expert to talk about the these issues that were shown in the movie. So uh, this is the these are the places, for example. Um, this is one new building which is totally empty because um, yeah. None of the commercial uses still came like after five years. We, we had a movie about Chinese uh, buildings that are, <laughs> you know, here. Um, and yeah, and these are different locations. These are different people coming to, to these locations. And just a story, uh, this uh, October, we show a movie of touristification of Venice, Venice Syndrome. We uh, screen it in a boat on Ljubljanica River. And it was really a nice experience when like <laughs> you were shaking in this boat and looking at the boats 
like <laughs> going in Venice all over. And yeah, I think that uh, we, 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 we just started with the, it was two, two times that we had this uh, festival, but we will still, we will sh for sure continue this year also. And uh, just the last project more, um, when we notice also in South Korea and in another neighborhoods where we are working, we notice that a lot of time city is not capable to take care of um, greenery from green areas in the neighborhoods because they are not owners. And on the other hand, we know that there are, we, we are recognize that there are a lot of people who has ideas, who has initiatives and um, who would like to participate, but they don't know how. They actually don't have the power, they don't have the knowledge about what, what are the legislations and so on. So we proposed last year to the city of Ljubljana as a pilot project to do a project Zunai. Zunai, it means outside. And it is, we proposed a tool for encouraging community-based space maintenance and civic participation. That means um, last year it was we because it was a pilot project. This year is the city of Ljubljana. They finance material costs and provide expert mentorship. But the residents who apply for this money, they invest time and labor. And last year, when we started for the first time, we, we made an open call. We got 60 applications from different neighborhoods, different uh, none of them from city center, it tells a lot. Uh, so we supported 10 initiatives. Together with the city municipality, we put criteria and we choose also together with them which 10 initiatives we will support. Um, and um, actually they were all really, they all really succeeded really good. These two girls, they made a movie um, evening in one neighborhood. Well, there was rain, for example, the whole day rain, <laughs> but um, like maybe it was 200 people coming and a lot of them were really old, like uh, grandmas, grandpas. They came one hour before waiting with umbrellas, the film to the movie to this to start. And it was just really amazing feeling. Um, and what actually they did, what kind of movies did they show? They, um, they work on the national TV, so they collect all the movies that they happened in this neighborhood. And this was one, one of initiative. Another one was this, this um, uh, three offices that they own a place here. This is an old um, factory. Um, it was, the place was parked all over. They decided to, to make this entrance to their offices uh, nicer, to make stands for bicycles, greenery, whatever. They were supported with 500 euros. And also we offered them support when it was like some legislation rules were needed to be explained or what they have, or we also helped them in finding cheap materials. Um, this was one initiative in really, really far uh, on the outskirts of Ljubljana, um, in one park, this abandoned like neighbors built playing equipment and um, um, they plant some trees and they like they did some prevention for cars to come to the park. Um, the, this, the, these people, like these kids are jumping here, but these are all this, these people. <laughs> they, they work together to clean this area and to make it more um, nice. Um, like two, two architects, they proposed, they found really near to the railway station a bench. No, here was not a bench, but people were all the time sitting here on this small edge. So they proposed a bench, simple as that, and it functions really good. Uh, and this family, they, there are some families in two building blocks and they decided to buy a strolly and to, to make a lot of toys so they can bring strolly out and play with kids. It was another initiative. For next year, uh, actually what, what I show here um, is the call is open. Uh, because of the corona, we don't know what actually the call is prolonged. We will see whether this will be made in her uh, in autumn or maybe next year. But still, um, city decided to take over the mechanism. They found it nice. And so next year, they will support 15 initiatives with 800 euros. Um, and at the end, I have just four slides. I would just 
um, again, repeat what are our principles, what we really believe. Um, and I think the really important thing for us is always to listen and to, to respect what, what we hear. Um, and um, as architects, we have a lot of knowledge and understanding about space. But if we do not know the users, it doesn't really help us, I think. And um, then what we also think it's important is connect and build networks. At all our projects, we try to connect as many people as possible, as I showed you before. This schema is the, this one, this, this picture that you see here is the result of one of our projects, uh, where we, through four years of events in one park, we offered a stable platform and, and built a strong network for mostly young creatives. So now these events in the park are long gone. We don't organize them anymore. But all these, for example, people that join or met there, they, they had a lot of um, common events now. And these common events, they live longer. They have also businesses together and these businesses are doing well. So I think that this is the most important effect of the of the events that we had in one park once. Um, and um, we think it's important test and question. I think I explained through the project this, but, um, and it question, um, I mean, it's important always to evaluate, think, to admit that you did some mistakes and failures and really try to learn from them and try to do it the other way next, next time. And last, uh, it's demand and be ambitious. And in our project, maybe sometimes they look funny and playful and at the end, they are really not. There is always a strong demand to move things. Um, and this, fo uh, this is always in the back. And this photo was taken at one of our street festivals since 2009. At the moment, Ljubljana was preparing a new traffic strategy. The draft we saw was all about how to make more spaces for cars. So this event looked pretty much like a street festival, but at the, at the back, we made a huge effort to invite the famous Jan Gil, uh, the urbanist from, um, from, uh, from Denmark, and um, he's like, uh, and we invited him to have lecture on the street. He was so kind to do it for a really, really low amount of money. <laughs> but we also managed to organize an official meeting with Ljubljana mayor, so they met in the city um, hall and Gail did an excellent job. He convinced the city authorities to completely change the philosophy in traffic planning. So this was the major success of this just ordinary street festival. And so in all the projects, we always try to have a strong demand and ambition to change things. So thank you. <laughs> have any questions? Um, Thank you very much, Lenka, for your presentation. First of all, it's very interesting to see how you work, uh, how you work um, with uh, people um, for uh, imaging uh, new shapes uh, for our cities and um, for, um, first of all, welcoming cities, if I can say that. And I, I have a question for you because uh, it's uh, really interesting for me that you are a, a multidisciplinary group. Uh, so there are many uh, different skills uh, in your uh, group. And uh, I, I was wondering, how do you work together? Uh, there is, um, in, a, in a practical way, uh, there is a, a leader of the group. Uh, um, uh, there are some people engaged in uh, different projects. Uh, how do you organize your work and how do you work uh, um, in a practical uh, uh, way? Actually, we, we don't have a leader. It's always that we um, everybody is responsible for his own project. Maybe I can say I'm maybe the longer, the longest here. So, uh, okay, I do the financing and I do help for bigger, pro I maybe lead the bigger projects, but um, we really, everybody works really independently in his own project. And then we have every, 
um, Monday. Now I already forgot it's since one month of this quarantine, but every Monday morning we met for three hours or four hours to discuss all the project, to discuss what, what we will do in this week. Um, and also to build teams because some people are really good in, um, uh, you know, in, uh, in talking, in writing, some are good in designing. So uh, even if uh, maybe this uh, socialist, sociologist is leading one project and she needs a design for a poster, she uh, asks one of architects to help her or uh, vice versa. It's always a lot of discussion in the office and but uh, we, we always insist that one is always at least has one project that is responsible of. And um, looking on deadlines, um, you know, and what it has to be done. But then um, what everybody we share, yeah, what we know we share with all the projects. Yeah. Thank you. There are any other questions from uh, you guys? Yeah. Yes, hi again. <laughs> yeah. uh, just earlier, you uh, when we were speaking about the uh, example where it was a community space, people, it was some kind of a spontaneous space, you mentioned something like to remove the biocratical boundaries. Yeah. This, this, uh, um, this was actually, it seems very um, out of the usual. At the same time, it, it gives a, a big range to the imagination, to a big freedom to people, right? Yeah. And you also mentioned that there was also the need for a coordinator. Yeah. So, so uh, how, how was this process? Like this coordination works? Yeah, yes. some, say if you have two or three um, events or three or four requests in one day and mm -hmm. yeah it's uh, actually like running that kind of places it takes a lot of time a lot of money for the yeah. we, we, we like this community place you actually it's just impossible to get financing for running community place in five years so we always mm -hmm. have to think of some innovative projects and we, we don't always succeed. So sometimes we finance the guy who runs the community home from other projects. You know, we have to find from other projects some money to, to put there. Or lately, last year, last year, we are in one European project with all the libraries of things. And then it helps a bit. But actually, it's a lot of work to coordinate. But what I meant for the users, if um, if you are in help, like, President of, of South Conasilia, for us, it was important to build on trust. So if one guy comes mm. to us and say, I need a place for one hour, we immediately trust them. They don't, he, he doesn't need to give us like papers and his, like, you know, he, he, he gives his phone number, of course, but not like that, you know, it's not because you, if you go to the city council and ask this, they have places, but you have to fill in application, you have to prove that you are non-profit. But some of them are even not organizations, but they need place to meet. So that's why we said it's important that uh, we take, because we are an NGO, we can take the responsibility to respond to the city and to have this place and say, okay, if something happens, we are, we are the one who, who have the contract with you. And I, I have to say that we had in this five years just once a case that one homeless guy was sleeping three nights because one neighbor unlocked him. But this was the only case that we had in five years. So why bother with so much bureaucracy? Because when we when we saw this, we just like discussed with this guy and he never repeated, you know. So it's uh I don't know, I think it's important to build on trust, yeah. <laughs> But it's on the other hand, it's it's not really easy to run that kind of places. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's also something. So we, we had before one girl; she was running it, and um, it's also important who is the person running this place, who's present two times a week there. Is yeah. the guy who who likes a lot children, so the children just came, or it's maybe the guy who really likes to discuss, or or a girl. It's it's even sometimes. It's a girl or or a man or a woman, you know, difference. It's really personal, yeah. 
Uh, just uh, one minor comment. I just uh, find your presentation very um, uh, uh, somehow new and it, it just you approached some different uh, angles. Uh, it was very interesting to see how with the example of making the benches from used chairs and so on, how you approached the blind people for a walk. Mm -hmm. This was very illuminating and I find it very interesting, frankly. So yep. thank you for sharing it. You know what was the result? I can tell you more about it. They just passed the old people's home and then they stopped because they said from here on we cannot go because we don't have any orientation at all. So we can you cannot tell you anything. So we said, okay, then, that, then we choose another way because we they they didn't have experience because they were afraid of this. Path, so they didn't use it, so they couldn't share any experience. But then we took another path to the um, to the medical center and to school. They know these paths, so on these paths they they shared with us um, how should the edge be done on the, of the street or how do they orient shadows and smells and all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a shock for us. We expected, like, you know, like really naively, now we will walk the street and they will tell us something, but they couldn't tell us anything, you know. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any other questions? Have you ever been in Ljubljana sometimes? No. I was uh, there twice uh, and uh, it's a beautiful city, I have to say, and um, I like uh, very much the, um, the, the center of the town and, uh, you know, uh, Alenka is full of people, full of place uh, to stay and uh, it's a warm uh, um, uh, environment uh, to to stay and to spend time um if you have the chance to go there i suggest you <laughs> a weekend in ljubljana yeah it, it's nice it's nice really. <laughs> and also the presence of, of the river you uh, you know it's very interesting because uh, you can connect the you you could uh, as a ljubljana and, uh, uh, people, you could have connected uh, the um, the public space with the the river, and it's very interesting the relationship between uh, space and water. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, it, uh, already the Plechnik did a great job. Yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, what was done after, or like now in last ten years, it was really done well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, if you have no other questions, I thank you very much, uh, Alenka, for, uh, the, for her presentation and for uh, their work. And um, we can take time for a coffee. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And see you uh, at uh, 12 for the next yeah. lesson. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Renka.